Now let's look at a multi-level BOM. Multi-level BOM is a little bit more useful. It's got a little bit more information to it in that every item also says what it's made from unless it's purchased. And then it's gonna have the purchase spec for it. Okay, so here I've shown you the three items that get made and how they show up. There's an extra level. There's one and item 1.1, which makes up the block housing, is made from 1.75 inch of two by three brass bar stock. And that gets purchased. So I don't have to do any more with this one. That one's all set. But you see, if somebody were to go, huh, I'm going to make the block housing. What do I need? The second level tells you what you need. And I think the, the people that made that YouTube video did a really great job. So go back and look at it in the, um, in the uh, preview section, the what to do. All right, let's look at the next one that's a make part. It's a made part. And it says it's a filter inlet and I need one of them. And to make that one filter inlet, I need a new thing, which is 0.1, a tenth of a roll. I need a tenth of a roll of PLA that's 1.75 millimeters. So to make my filter, I have to find out in the second level what to make it from. And you can see the way these get numbered. Okay. Item number one of item number four becomes 4.1. Okay. Now... We're using this because it just calls the quantity and we're telling how you're counting it here. Okay. I could say 0.1 kilograms or 0.1 roll. I could also call that out as something like 32 meters of this stuff because it comes in a long string on the roll. Okay. How this is done depends purely on how it is purchased. So you have to work with your purchasing department to figure out how to do this. Okay, but they would know that to make this thing, I'm going to use up 0.1 roll, a tenth of a roll of PLA to make my filter inlet. That's how that gets done. And the last one that gets made is my piston, my piston, Okay, and it says I use one piston, and that piston is made from 1.5 inches of 304 stainless steel round bar. And that round bar is 5 eighths inch. So now I know to make this, this is what I need. And this gets the number 8.1. Now these can get very complex. They can get very deep. You can have three levels, four levels, five levels, phantom levels, all sorts of stuff. But this is what we're going to work with. This is how a multi-level bill of materials goes. And so you're going to still need on your multi-level bill of material that you make an item 9 and an item 10, which will be the O-ring and the, and the spring. They'll both be purchased parts, so it won't really have an effect on the multi-level too much. And you'll still need to put the drawings in. But now look, what are you going to use for this spec here? Okay. Often there will be a tabulated drawing for this spec. But you can also put in the Amazon... Um, the Amazon URL, the cut sheet where you show it, any piece of information that will allow your purchasing agent, the person who's going to 
actually call up or get online and buy it to know what to make. Okay? And so this will have a certain a certain spec to it. So that's what a multi-level bill of materials is. Now you're going to, in this uh, assignment this week, you're going to use the multi-level bill of materials to set some material requirements. So let's see how that works. So here's an example. And I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and hide this column right now. You don't need that. So this is really cool, but this is to make one part. And often it's more economical or more feasible or, um, or needed to make more than one part at once. So if I want to make one um, I'll use this much of each item. But if I'm going to make 10, I'll use 10 times that much for each item. And that's important because now all of a sudden I need to have 17 and a half inches of bar stock. And I'll have to go and look for that and make sure I've got it before I start making my 10 items. And if I don't have 17 and a half inches of it, I'll have to buy some to make 10 pumps. And if I'm going to make 20 pumps, I have to make 20 times each of these. I need 20 block housings, which means I need 20 times that much brass. And if I need 20 um, pumps, and each pump has two of the close nipples, I'll need 40 of the items. So the multi-level bill of materials is the one that's most often used when you're trying to figure out how much material resources you need. And the people that do that are called MRP, Material Resource Planners. And there's MRP Systems, Material Resource Planning Systems. And they've been around for a long, 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 long time, but they're getting far more complex these days with things like Kanban and just in time. You can imagine that if you don't get enough of this material on time and you're waiting and waiting to get it and you're not able to use a machine and everything else is waiting for this, that customers can be upset and salespeople can be upset and shipping people can be upset. So getting the right amount of material at the right time, at the right cost, to meet your client's needs is what production control is all about. And material resource planning. Here I call it material requirements. Some people call it that material requirements planning. But most is called material resource planning is based on multiplying whatever is in your quantity column by how many you're going to make today or this week or this month. And we call it an order quantity because there's a work order to make this. And usually there's somebody who has put in uh, a sales order to buy them, okay? Usually you make things when they're expected to be sold. Not always, but often, okay? So that's what you do with a multi-level bill of material. Your job this week is to finish up and make a multi-level bill of material, which includes item nine, and item 10, 
and it includes what you make each item out of. Okay, this one you're going to have to just trust me on that it'll do that. I will actually show you how to do that later on when we start working on our work orders. Uh, but that's the cool thing. Watch this. What if I'm wrong? 0.25. Huh. I love spreadsheets. It just changes things for me. What if, what if we want to really squeeze it down to exactly the right amount? We can do whatever we want. So you want to set this up over here so that they work on formulas based on this. Well, this is easy. It's one times whatever is over here. And then this becomes 10 times that. This becomes 20 times that. And it's a pretty quick and easy system to set up. All right, so there you go. That's your job. That's what you're to do this week for your multi-level bill of materials. Present your bill of materials multi-level with all of your spec drawings and URLs or cut sheets or whatever. Usually this is full of links to drawings, links to purchasing sites. Okay, that's what goes in here with your number nine and your number 10 for the O-ring and the spring or the spring and the O-ring and fill all this out. And then give me an, a, a way to figure out my order number. One, 10, 20. I should be able to do any number of these that I want just very quickly. And I can, and this, this will change too. Maybe I make that one 100. See how everything changes? So I don't really need this third column. I don't have to have this one. Do you want to just show it like this and show me that it will change automatically depending on the work order quantity? That's great. Now there's lots to this that we're going to do more work on when we talk about work orders and purchase orders. And we'll talk a little bit about that in class, about how these numbers are made, the make from numbers. Okay, we'll talk about that a little bit in class. But for now, you can just make your multi-level bill of materials with a materials requirements calculator.